What are the two ways we can go about checking to see if three is a solution? Yeah, you could say, what is 6 times 3 minus 5? What is that? And you would say it's 18 minus 5, which is 13. So that's one way to check it. Another way to check it would be to actually solve for x. So how would you do that? What would you add to both sides? So you get 6x equals 18. So x is equal to 18 over 6, which is 3. So does that work too? Yeah. So you just verified it two different ways. Now, when you're checking this way, you just have to be careful not to work on both sides if you're doing the, the first method. Because you're checking to see, does this equal 13? So plug in 3, and does it equal 13? It does. It doesn't make the statement true. A solution is a number that makes the statement true. So, uh, you're supposed to evaluate, so you need to plug in there. So it's going to be 10. And one good practice when you're plugging in numbers, put parentheses around them all. So it's going to be negative 2 squared minus 8 all over what? 11. Well, what's negative 2 squared? What's, it's 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. So it's 10 times 4 minus 8 over 11. And now work down. It's not, you know, going across is a little sloppy. So you have 40 minus 8 over 11, which is 32 over 11. Leave it like that. I'd much prefer 32 over 11 than mixed fractions or decimals. That is an exact answer. It's much easier for me to understand. I like, I prefer improper fractions. Prefer it.